We're going to continue talking about renal physiology and in this lecture we're going to focus on the collecting tubules of the nephron and we're going to differentiate between the cortical collecting tubules from the medullary collecting tubules. So once again from a functional standpoint we can say that the collecting tubules receive the hypotonic solution of the ultrafiltrate due to the countercurrent multiplier that takes place in the loop of Henle, the active reabsorption of sodium produces a hypotonic ultrafiltrate that enters into the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting tubule now regulates the regulation of reabsorption and secretion of the ions as well as the acid base regulation and then we'll see how the water is balanced and the regulation of water via the antidiuretic hormone in the distal collecting tubule. So if we look in more detail of the collecting tubules, we can see that this is where the hypotonic solution from the loop of Henle enters into the distal convoluted tubule and now enters into the collecting tubules. So the first thing that we need to do is differentiate between the cortical tubules, the cortical collecting tubules from the medullary collecting tubules. So we can say that the cortical collecting tubules is involved with the absorption of sodium and chloride, water, calcium, and bicarb. And the secretion that takes place within the cortical collecting tubules is the secretion of the proton hydrogen ion and the potassium ion. And we can say that the cortical collecting tubules have primarily two types of cells, the P cells, the principal cells, and the I cells, which are the intercalated cells. The P cells are involved with the reabsorption of sodium and the secretion of potassium. And that's under the influence of aldosterone. Aldosterone secreted by the adrenal cortex or the adrenal gland promotes the reabsorption of sodium from the tubular fluid. You have reabsorption of sodium into the capillary system which joins in with the systemic circulation. Likewise, by the aldosterone influence, as you reabsorb the sodium, there is an excretion or secretion of potassium from the systemic circulation into the tubular fluids which are then passed through the urine through excretion process. So that involves the P cells or the principal cells of the cortical collecting tubules under the influence of aldosterone. The I cells, the intercalated cells of the collecting tubules are involved with the reabsorption of bicarb and the secretion of the proton or the hydrogen ion. And that occurs via the use of the ATPase that secretes the hydrogen ion or the proton, which, as it did in the proximal convoluted tubule, which we discussed earlier, just as a hydrogen ion binds with the bicarb to form carbonic acid, the same thing takes place in the collecting tubule in which a hydrogen ion which is secreted via the ATPase, joins with the bicarb to form carbonic acid. And the carbonic acid then disassociates with or into water, which is H2O and CO2, which are easily and readily able to pass through the membrane and enter into the intercalated cell. And using the carbonic anhydrase, water and carbon dioxide join to form the carbonic acid and once again will disassociate into the hydrogen ion and the bicarb. Bicarb is then able to be absorbed or reabsorbed into the capillary system and therefore absorbed systemically in order to regulate the acid-base balance within the cells. Now if we look at the medullary collecting tubules we can see that the medullary collecting tubules are involved with the water regulation 
and that occurs under the influence of the antidiuretic hormone which binds and activates the V2 receptors and binding to the V2 receptors stimulates the adenylate cyclase which therefore generates the energy and stimulates the protein which is known as aquaporin and the aquaporin allows the cell membrane to become permeable to water and therefore water that was normally going to be excreted through the collecting tubules as urine now is able to be reabsorbed and due to the countercurrent regulator now there's a hypertonic environment within the medullary portion of the kidney interstitium which drives the water to enter through the aquaporin, the permeable membrane, due to the, the aquaporin, and through the concentration gradient be reabsorbed into the capillary system. And therefore this increases the blood volume and helps to increase blood pressure through the stimulation of the antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary gland. So once again the collecting tubular, tubular receives a hypotonic solution and that's received from the loop of Henle. Not much change takes place within the distal convoluted tubule. And in the collecting tubule, there's a high dynamics that takes place in regards to reabsorption of sodium, secretion of potassium under the influence of aldosterone. And that takes place within the P cells of the cortical collecting tubules. The acid base balance takes place within the intercalated cells of the collecting tubules and that occurs through the process of reabsorbing bicarb and we can see the importance of bicarb in the acid-base balance in the sense that bicarb helps to regulate the pH for example and metabolic acidosis and the various respiratory and metabolic processes in which acidosis or alkalosis can take place the bicarb helps as a buffer system to maintain the physiological pH so that the enzymes can occur properly in various processes of metabolism. And then here we can see that the medullary collecting tubules via the antidiuretic hormone is able to reabsorb water into the capillary systems through the aquaporin and the environment, the hypertonic environment within the medullary interstitium that was created by the countercurrent multiplier which we talked about as far as the loop of Henley.